is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Every once in a while, I'll do a search on Google for the words quantum grammar. I don't bother to type in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, because I guess my feeling is that this modern generation who's coming into this type of construct basically has probably come in via the colon russell hyphen j colon gould type people or the mark lowercase k people which are the most well-known uh, folks out there using this the this wording and they don't use that whole correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, because it's probably too much of a tongue twister for them. They get tied up saying it and they make mistakes, so they just say quantum grammar. And so, interestingly enough, this is one of the search results that came up from the University of Illinois. It's a blog post from 2011. And I thought it would be interesting to take a look at this. And also, there will be a grammar lesson in here, so stay tuned. The government does not control your grammar. Despite the claims of mass murderers and freepers, never heard that word before, the government does not control your grammar. The government has no desire to control your grammar, and even if it did, it has no mechanism for exerting control. The schools, which are an arm of the government, have proved singularly ineffective in shaping students' grammar. That's a bold-faced lie. Plus, every time he opened his mouth, press George W. Bush proved that the government can't control its own grammar. Bro. It's not rocket surgery. Nonetheless, grammar conspiracy theories abound. In a YouTube video, Jared Lee Lochner, arrested for the Tucson assassinations that so shocked the nation, the Tucson assassinations, was there more than one? Warns, the government is implying mind control and brainwash on the people by controlling your grammar. So the government is implying mind control. So actually, D. Uh, D. Barron up here, the author of this piece, is not actually reading or perhaps cognizing what they're reading because they're saying that the conspiracy theory is that the government controls the grammar. But Jared here is saying that the government is implying mind control. Now that or that's two entirely different things. To imply something and to actually say something are two different things. You get my drift? If I imply that I'm going to stand up as opposed to actually standing up, you see what I'm saying? Those are two different things. So perhaps De Baron ought to be debriefed on what grammar as actually is here. As further evidence that Lochner's own grasp of both own grasp both of grammar and of reality is tenuous, he is reported to have asked Representative Gabrielle Giffords the truly bizarre question, what is government 
if words have no meaning. Three years before he put a bullet through the left side of her brain, the part that controls language. What is government if words have no meaning? That's like asking, what is grass if words have no meaning? But wrestling control of grammar away from the government, the same way other revolutionaries might take over the newspapers and the radio stations, is the underlying theme of another denier of government authority, the right-wing looney tune David Wynn Miller, a former pipe fitter <laughs> who made up his own language in order to challenge the government's legitimacy and avoid paying taxes. Common misconception. All right, not to mention the ad hominems. Uh, there is no denying the government's authority. The government definitely has authority over the vast majority of folks. And the way they do it, not only through grammar, but also through guns and clubs, through force, might makes right. Um, challenging the government's legitimacy the government is legal, of course, because it's a legal fiction system. So whatever they say goes if you're in that system. And David Wynn Miller never, ever advocated avoiding paying taxes. Avoid actually means no avoidance. So it actually means to pay taxes. He always suggested paying taxes with correctness. That's what he was saying. And attending his expensive how-to seminars. Oh, what do they mean by that? Six-day, $1,400 course. Six days for $1,400? Let's be generous, folks. Let's say that each one of those days was eight hours long, okay? Okay. So let's do the math here. Let's find out exactly how expensive his seminar actually was. So we got six days, six times eight hours, 48 hours. So then 1,400 divided by 48 equals 29 bucks an hour. That seems about right to me. That's not expensive. Hell, that, that's way underpriced as far as I'm concerned. Interesting. So that's a bold-faced lie. That's not an expensive seminar. I mean, depending upon what your position is, what your financial situation is. To bring the courts to a standstill by filing stacks of incomprehensible legal motions. Again credentialing an extreme lack of correct sentence structure knowledge here, which is, I mean, to be expected. Written in what Miller calls quantum language or sometimes communication syntax language, again, incorrect, but is literally psychobabble. Any grammar pretty much is psychological, right? Any grammar or language is a psychological operation. Why do I say that? Because it all happens here in your psyche. It's not a big deal. People make a big deal out of that. So here it says, above is a sample of the quantum language invented by David Wynn Miller, who prefers to write his name as colon David Eiffel Wynn colon Miller. That's wrong. Because at the time in 2011, Dave was a live life claimant and he would not capitalize his name like that. To my knowledge. Because he thinks that adding punctuation in small caps to names, where are the small caps then, DeBaron? like wearing an aluminum foil hat, renders him invisible to the legal system. Gibberish. Okay. Is this gibberish? Let's take a close look at this grammar, not language, grammar, and find out if it's psychobabble. We see this sentence here. I have taken it from the web page. You see here, it's this one. 
tilde 11 for the correct sentence structure communication syntax language of the facts are with the claim of the one in 900 terms of each word's correct meaning within the sentence structure and I have copy and pasted that into a word document and we're going to do some forensics on it but first we have to lay out some ground rules some grammar rules With correct sentence structure, there is a mathematical interface. This mathematical interface is achieved by using a part of speech called the positional. There are four positionals. You see this at the top of your page here. For, by, of, and with. For serves the function of the cause of the sentence, and there is only one cause per sentence. And it is congruent with by which would be the authority of the sentence, which comes at the end of the sentence, and there is only one authority of the sentence. And then you have the positional of, which is known as, serves the function of the concern, i.e. the consequence, and that is congruent with with, which serves the function of possessive. So in correct sentence structure, the main idea is one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. As you can see, the meaning of for is ca or the function of for is cause. The function of by is authority. The function of of is concern. The function of with is possessive. One function per positional. Four positionals. One congruency per positional. For is congruent with by. By is congruent with for. Of is congruent with with. With is congruent with of. So now you see a sentence here given an example of how it's used and I have written it as a graph. So we have for the fact, which is the cause of the fact, which is the concern. Then you put your verb in. There's always two position loadio fact phrases in front of the verb for the fact of the fact. Principle behind this is you need two points with which to draw a straight line to establish your geometric level playing field of communication for the fact of the fact verb moving you into the possessive and the authority. So you have is, which is singular. There is one verb in correct sentence structure, is, and also the plural form of that, are. And that is contingent upon the plurality or singularity of the cause, the fact in the cause part of the sentence. So if fact was facts, then the verb would have to be are. As it stands, we're not saying that. We're saying it's a fact, so it's singular is. Has nothing to do with this. If it's for the fact of the facts, it wouldn't be are. It still is because the fact in the cause position is singular. A lot of people miss that. Fine little detail. So this is a basic structure. It must start with for the, and it must end with a by the, because going backwards, by becomes for, with becomes of, then you put your verb in, of becomes with, with becomes of, of becomes with, and for becomes by. It says the same thing forwards as it does backwards. For the fact, of the fact, is with the fact, of the fact, with the fact, by the fact. Now let's see if David Wynn Miller's sentence checks out. First of all, facts in correct sentence structure must be preceded by a position loadial phrase. As in, this is a fact, this is a loadial, this is a positional. So you have positional lodial fact, positional lodial fact, positional lodial fact, positional lodial fact, so on and so forth. What if this was in your fact position? For the one, of the one, is, with the fact, of the fact, with the fact, by the fact. Actually, let's put one the whole way down just to be consistent here, just to prove my point. 
What's happening here? What, what do you see that's happening here? One is being positioned by the positional lodial phrase, meaning if you're going to use facts in a correct sentence, if you're going to use correct sentence structure communication, you must position the fact with a position lodial phrase. Is one a fact? Yes. So it must use the position lodial phrase. Another way to write for the one would be this. For the one. And another way to write of the one would be this. Colon space tilde one. Is, and then so on and so forth. We're not going to get into the use of the colon here too much, just that it represents a position lodial phrase, as I've clearly shown here. What's wrong with this picture? The 11 has not been positioned. There's no colon in front of it. There's no for the in front of it. So what's it doing here? And there's no period following it. There's no dash following it. Short dash. There's no period. There's nothing. So what do we have here? We have an adjective coloring a pronoun followed by an adverb because the 11 has not been positioned right off the bat. That would be like doing this. Does that make any sense to you? This is how it would look if it was actually written as a sentence. One, one is one, 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 one. So basically, because nothing in, uh, technically speaking, in the domain of correct sentence structure, anything in brackets is not on the page. So it would basically be adjective, 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 pronoun. That's not correct sentence structure. So if you can see the uh, syntax key here, 11 is a pronoun, or I'm sorry. So you can see the syntax key here, 11 is an adjective, four would be a pronoun. The is an adverb. And then we come to this correct sentence structure communication syntax language. So I, I don't even know what that is because I use correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. Grammar and language are two different things, folks. Two different things. Why Colin David Eiffel Wayne Colin Miller didn't take the time to be correct in these scenarios is beyond me, beyond the scope of this video. I'm pointing out the forensics here. So this would be considered a compound adjective. If 
then of would be a pronoun. And we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. And in facts is an adjective. Are is an adjective. With is a pronoun. And again, the same rule. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for blah, blah, blah. And then claim would be adjective of pronoun. The adverb. And then we have this compound verb and then of adverb and then each hyphen words hyphen correct hyphen meaning is obviously an adjective within being a pronoun followed by the adverb the and then sentence structure, which would be a dangling participle verb. So let's get a little bit deeper into this. All right. Let's graph it. For the one of the one is with the one of the one with the one by the one. When you go backwards, by becomes for, with becomes of. Then you put your verb in, so on and so forth. Does David Wynn Miller's sentence follow those rules? For the blah, 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 of the blah, are, with the blah, of the, of the, within. Now let's double check. Is that actually what it says or did I mistype something? No, I did not. That is exactly what it says. So I'm going to highlight in red critical positional sequencing errors. Because if you read this sentence backwards, what is congruent with within? And is within even a positional that we would use? Let's look up here at our list. For, by, of, and with. I don't see within in there. Of is congruent with with. For is congruent with by. For is the cause. By is the authority. Of is concerned. With is possessive. I don't see anything, any function for within. So going backwards, how would you say that? Of out, meaning, you know, in is congruent with out, with is congruent with of, so hypothetically you could say of out, right? Problem. Every correct sentence structure must start with a cause. So if you use within and you start the sentence off, you read it backwards, it would, it would mean of out the sentence structure with each word cor word's correct meaning is with the one in 900 terms of the claim with the facts by the correct sentence structure communication. So that voids the mathematical interface. Now let's creden credential some particles of negation that are in here. The ing is a particle of negation. The I and N is a particle of negation. The O and 1 is a particle of negation. Actually, we could use a little grace and not do that. But the way that I fixed it was to spell 1 like that. I salvaged it with the digraph of the OE. Another critical error, which I have saved for now because I wanted to see if any of my advanced students would have picked this up. 
is the verb are. Because this fact is not plural. This is plural, but that has no bearing on the verb. The fact in the cause position determines the plurality or singularity of the verb. So therefore, the verb is incorrect. You would not follow an of the with an of the. Quite clearly stated by David Wynn Miller himself in several videos, which you can find on my YouTube channel. If you look up the word concatenation, you'll find two or three videos of David Wynn Miller giving a similar schematic to the sequencing of positionals, as you see right there, highlighted in gray. Yes, I know. It's a bit of a dichotomy that I'm using David's teaching even though I am auditing David's grammar. Who can explain it? Not me. So there you go. They're not even... Oh, wow. Here's one that I did not mention, which I hope my advanced students picked out. If you look at this sentence right here, you notice there's a hyphen between each and words. So that means there is no lodial in this sentence. You see? Everything else is for the, of the, with the, of the, and then you have of and no lodial. I have to think that this is a typo and that each was meant to be used as a lodial. But again, that's a guess on my part. Who knows with all these other mistakes. And David did not even correctly credential his own technology, language instead of grammar, and no parse. The idea that the government controls language, which appeals to conspiracy theorists, is just a subset of the more commonly held view. <laughs> Why would they hyphenate that? that language controls thought. Oh, wow. Language controls thought. They're saying that language does not control thought. Well, on a literal sense, no, language does not control thought. More, a more accurate statement would be language modifies thought. Mo language influences thought. There's no getting around it. When you look at something or sense something or see something, smell something, touch something, taste something, words pop into your head. Like, here we go. I'm drinking this. Mmm, coffee. It's a little lukewarm. Could be hotter. See, these words are popping into my head. There's no getting around it. They influence the thought process. So if this individual is saying that grammar does not influence the thought process, I mean, they're saying it controls the thought process, which is most times not true. But I guess the implication low key is that it influences thought, which is 100% correct. It does. George Orwell used newspeak to illustrate this kind of linguistic mind control in his novel, 1984. And in his essay, Politics in the English Language, where he decried the, con the connection between politics and the debasement of language. Tell that to George W. Bush. In the essay, Orwell presents a catalog of swindles and perversions of words like class, totalitarian, science, progressive, reactionary, bourgeois, equality, together with syntactic forms like the passive voice. Orwell claimed that all of these were used in political writing in most cases more or less dishonestly. And using the passive voice, he added that political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable and to give an appearance of solidity to pure wind. Orwell champions this strong form of linguistic determinism, often called the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, after linguists Edward Sapir and Benjamin Lee Whorf, who contend that language controls and even limits thought. 
let's just replace the word controls with influences and even limits thought. It does influence the limitation of thought. Because if you, how many times have you folks out there, and I'm talking to you folks, read something, and without looking it up or trying to certify it or anything like that, you just base your perception and thought process on who posted it, what it says, and then think that it's true. How many times have you done that without checking out a continuance of the evidence as to whether what you read is true or not? How many times? Folks, I'm guilty of the same thing. We do it all the time. So um, it does limit thought if we let it. Unless we have a word for something, it is invisible to us. That is not true. That is not true. However, if our vocabulary is limited, we may have trouble explaining something, and that goes down to closure. If you don't have closure on something, you're not going to be able to explicate it to someone else. That's why I say it is of critical importance that if you go into a foreign vessel and dry dock with your document, contract, postal vessel court venue, postal mechanics, banking mechanics, grammar mechanics, flag mechanics, if you don't have closure on all these things and you cannot articulate that to another contract party, you're effed. You're done. You don't have the words, so therefore, you're going to come off in the very least, like an idiot, or at the very most, like a dangerous lunatic that they will lock up because you're a danger to yourself and others. Keep that in mind. Closure is of paramount importance. While language does predispose us to think in certain ways, yes, the connection between language and thought is much looser than the paranoids and pseudonymous essays. So, what? What? Pseudonymous essayist? You mean pseudonymous essayist like D. Baron? <laughs> That's a pseudonym. Bro. Says he was charged with the shooting in Arizona that killed six people, including U.S. District Court Judge John Rowe and injuring 14 others including U.S. Representative Gabrielle Giffords, indicted on 49 counts by federal grand juries in Arizona. These counts include attempted assassination of a member of Congress and two counts of murder of a federal employee. So I guess, yes, that would be considered mass shooting, as in six victims, decedents, are considered a mass of people and 14 others injured. Horrendous, horrendous thing to have happen. No doubt about it. Some of this stuff can be very scary for some folks. And yes, guns and unaliving and so on and so forth, it's a dangerous world out there. It can be a dangerous world. That's why it's a good idea, by my humble perception, to always keep your powder dry. Train yourself in ways to keep your vessel safe and your vessel construct safe. And there are a myriad of ways to do that. Not only physically, but also mentally and grammatically. And with correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, you would have the grammatical part of that covered. And if you continue watching this video to the end, you will find that there are ways to learn this if you are indeed serious about it. It would be just like if you were serious about learning how to fight. Actually fight. Meaning, not some martial art categorizes karate or whatever like that. Like actual fighting. Like wrestling mixed with boxing and jujitsu or Muay Thai. Or a genuine Krav Maga studio. Those would be the places to learn how to fight. 
and then translate that into you know maybe using weapons after you learn how to fight because folks if you just carry around a weapon and you don't know how to fight chances are if you actually are attacked you've just brought a weapon for your enemy to take away from you if you don't know how to fight it's so important to learn how to fight first and then add the weapon if you so choose it's the same thing with grammar you may have all the correct words but you got to know how to use them you got to know how to place them you got to know the order the sequencing so on and so forth the mechanics of how to do that so important am i getting blue in the face from saying this over and over i feel like i am thanks for watching Thank you.